mistakes you see people make? The biggest, well, I mean, the easiest is just check out Zephyr events on Facebook and look at all the Instagram. mistakes there. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I mean, so the biggest mistakes that I see people make are that they don't, like, number one, it sounds simple, but they don't really know what they are marketing. And what I mean by that is like they put all this stuff out. Like I literally was on a call with a girl before and she's like, oh, we're doing all this social media stuff and doing all this social media stuff and like we're not getting any, any leads. Social media stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right. We're doing social media stuff. So we're posting, we're doing stories, we're doing this, we're doing that, but we're not getting any leads. I was like, well, normally it's because you're not making an offer, mm. right? Or you're not driving people to an effective offer. Yeah. So it's like you can't expect people, you can't expect people to know what to do just by watching your content. Yeah. So you need to give them a clear, concise call to action and you need to have a good offer. So it's like you can't just go, oh, magically, like we'll use Zephyr events as an example, right? So you can't just magically expect that they're gonna know if they see a post that you are an event coordinator, that you have three packages, that these are the three packages that they can choose from. You're not going to know that. Very true. Right? But also, that you can't really expect someone to go from just seeing something to the point where they go, I'm just going to give you money now. Yeah, yeah. Because that's not the case. It's like, there needs to be a relationship built in some way, shape or form. Mm. So most people try and go straight for the kill. Right? So you've got to figure out what is it that I can use to give people value so that then when it comes to them deciding to use me, that I'm the most logical choice. Mm. So for example, it might be a... Like again, if we stick with Zephyr Events who does the wedding stuff, like it might be a um, budget calculator. So it's like, cool, most people go, I'm going to have a wedding and I'm going to spend this much. But it's like, but hang on, how do you know how to allocate that budget from catering, from like uh, venues, from this, from that? So most people probably wouldn't know how to do that yeah, from true. staff or people coming on the day. So it's like, cool, if you have a budget, you should have 30% allocation for food, 20% allocation for alcohol, 10% allocation, you know, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. If you could give someone a thing, a thing like that, even like just an Excel spreadsheet where they can enter their numbers, total budget, 30 grand, right? Put all the things in. And let's just yeah. say that as a if, as a coordinator and you can be a negotiator as well, right? And you go, cool, I know on average I can get most average prices down by 10%. If their total price for their wedding is say 30 grand and you can negotiate stuff down 10%, $3,000 benefit. Yeah, big. 1500 of that can go to Zephyr events. Yeah, beautiful. You I'll know? take that. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, if you can figure out those ways and it's like, well, that's just adding value to them because you, a lot of people assume in their businesses that everyone knows like everything that you know. Mm. It's, it's called like information bias. It's like you, you have all this information in your head and because of that, you make decisions, but not everyone has that same information you do. Yeah, very true. So it's like trying to get that information out as well and position yourself so that um, you know they kind of realize how much you know and then you're positioned so well in the industry yeah and if you yeah. can give someone something like that where they go wow I'm gonna use this with every supplier I talk to mm. every time they're thinking of you yeah so they like not every single person can or will go with you however they'll think okay next time I go to make a booking or if I talk to my friends like oh, I used Zephyr events gave me this calculator and it helped me save you know money on my wedding I did it myself anyway but you know they might refer someone to you, whatever it might be yeah they won't forget that yeah so same as us we have the perfect ad template right where we give people a template that they can use to write the ad so every time someone does that regardless if they're consciously thinking of it or not they're remembering that your social voice gave them the ad template mm -hmm. yeah, so like that's the, the pretty much the biggest one is not knowing what you're going to do or how to put it out there and then like the next biggest problem i would say and your mistake that people make is that they don't know who they're marketing to mm -hmm. right because for example even again if we continue the the theme here like someone who is getting married next weekend is not the right person no right unless you're extremely yeah. fast yeah <laughs> right it's and not then the right. i don't want to deal with that bride <laughs> yeah it's not the right person to have a, um an event planner mm. right and it's like well and probably someone who just got engaged today is not right either no so you know if you're trying to put out a message that's generic to all the people that fit in the category of engaged people you know it's not going to work so there needs to be a period of time and you need to be able to figure out cool how can i capture them when they're at the right like the mm -hmm. decision making time frame mm -hmm. 
because again this might be an assumption but me thinking about it like i am not engaged but i would go well there probably comes a point in time when you decide if you're going to just do it yourself or you need to get help yeah probably you know two three months into your uh planning when you realize you're in over your head <laughs> yeah so they're gonna go wow i need i need this right i need this help but you need to go cool you don't want to get to the after they've already made the decision because then they're just shopping around on price and they're like oh just shopping around this person gives me five hours this one gives me 10 hours whatever mm -hmm. like it's not really then in having an effective communication process with them so it's like cool how do i get them after they've got engaged and before they make the decision that they do need someone how can i give them something of value so that i capture them at that point in time mm -hmm. Because most people would say, oh, your, your niche or your person that you work with is okay. people that are engaged. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, that's incorrect. Yeah. Like, it is at the top level, but then there's layers to that. And you can be much more refined when you look at it and approach it. And if you do it that way, then what happens is your marketing message is way tighter. You generate more leads. The leads that you generate are hotter, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like, they're more interested, they're more intrigued, and they're more ready to take action. So how do you call out those people or how do you actually find them say through Facebook like is there targeting options to say all right they've been engaged say for six months and then they're probably at the stage where they're planning and thinking about this service so um, I from memory that I think there is a engage there's definitely an engaged targeting but I don't know if it breaks it down by uh, the long? length of time yeah so what I would be looking at doing is as a definitely targeting engaged people still but then looking at cool like what are the magazines and stuff that they would buy first and then what actions would they be taking so I would be writing an ad and so this the second way in which you can distinguish your niche or your audience that you want to work with is through the copy mm -hmm. so when I would be writing an ad it would be like hey you've probably been reading uh, Brides magazine and Bridal Australia and such and such and you're starting to learn that it's gonna be pretty overwhelming to organize this on this day and it's like that's not what it means to be a bride what it means to be a bride is to have a day where everyone who cares about you is there with you they love you and you can relax and have a great time but you can't do that if you're juggling 65 different suppliers and you're trying to figure out where the flowers are <laughs> that's what i do that's my job yeah. i help ride sleep easy do you so know if you've been going who writes good ads that i could uh... <laughs> You know, so then at the end, it's like, cool, if you want to be a relaxed bride and you're realizing it's getting too much, this is already going to be too much and you haven't even started, then you need to book in a call with me. I'm Christy from Zephyr Events. Blah, blah, blah. Bang. Right? Nice and simple. So I think if you can approach it like that and call them out by using the copy, yeah. then you're pretty much close to golden. Yeah, 100%. That so was yeah, great. I mean that's I'm the. I'm glad we've got this recorded. I can just go back and write that word for word. <laughs> yeah. So I mean that's for me is the biggest marketing mistakes that I see people make. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, if you're watching this on YouTube and you enjoyed that a <laughs> little bit of riffing, then please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe so you can see this first before anyone else. Until next time, I'm oh, Kim Barrett. Hang on. Also, if you're a wedding coordinator, don't <laughs> steal that coffee. <laughs> don't steal that if you're a wedding coordinator, guys. All right. Until next time, adios.